Hey folks, who wants Mushu pork? That's a trick question, we're making it anyway. Mushu pork traces its origins to northern China, so named because the scrambled egg resembles the blossom of a yellow flower. Now the popular version somehow turned into an American Chinese flavored taco. Good news is, when you're dealing with a dish that's strayed so far off the path, it is very open to interpretation. So, for the meal prep version, we've added a whole bunch of mushrooms to balance out the protein and the fiber, as well as some bell pepper to add some crunch and some color. Want to see how to make it? Let's begin. So, to start with our marinade, we're going to mix some sesame oil, oyster sauce, tamari, ideally this should be rice wine, but you could use sherry if you're in a pinch, and some rice flour. And then beat it all up until it's smooth. Pork time. Now, make sure you have a sharp knife. This is where we set the tone for our stir fry. We want to make sure that we have nice thin slices as we go down. And for a piece like this, I'm going to cut it in half once lengthwise and maybe once in half. That's a nice thin strip for our stir fry. If you want, you could probably cut along lengthwise if you want to make some sort of pork spaghetti, but that's not what we're here for today. And then we add it into the marinade. Sploosh. And combine. And then we need to leave that for about half an hour or so. Let's get some other stuff ready while we wait. You can't have a proper mushu without scrambled eggs, so we're gonna crack 10 whole eggs into this bowl. Welcome to meal prep. And then we add another splash of rice wine, some salt, some pepper, and give it a whip. So to keep the stir fry moving, let's get everything ready in advance. We're gonna start with our garlic press. It's funny, I was wearing this shirt out in public the other day and someone came up to me and asked if I'm wearing this to warn people that I smell like garlic. And I thought, you're not wrong. Once you have your giant garlic pile, you could start cutting up your, what is this? Ginger. So I don't normally see mushu pork with onions, so we're gonna fix that. Now, when you have a stir fry, you typically want larger onion chunks, about the same size as everything else that you're doing. With this onion, uh, it's about as long as we want it to be, so I'm just gonna simply cut out some nice chunks sideways like so, and just make sure that I don't chop my finger off in the meantime. Worst case, I have the camera rolling, so it's considered content. Peppers for color and also fiber. So same rules apply. We want these to be about the same size as the onion and the pork as we go through. So we wanna cut some nice strips and then give them all one nice chop in half. Almost last and definitely not least, I'm running out of room here. Almost last but definitely not least is your spring onion or your scallion and we just want to cut on a bit of a severe angle as we go through. And then I'm just going to move it over to this cutting board for the shot. And then we just need to shred some cabbage and some carrots which is super easy when you can just buy a coleslaw pack. I'm going to season a hot pan with some peanut oil. Let's scramble some eggs. Now, because we're gonna be leaving these in the fridge for a week, we wanna make sure that they are cooked all the way through and we don't have any bits of raw egg kicking around. And then to keep the stir fry moving, we're just gonna temporarily move it into a bowl. Next step is to add your pork. It's tough not to overcrowd the pan when we're cooking this much food. And we're gonna to need to cook everything in batches so that we're actually frying it and not just sort of steaming it in a pile of other stuff. Keep moving everything around in the pan until you don't see pink anymore. We want to make sure that we don't overcook it because it's still going to be microwaved throughout the week as we heat it up and we don't want to dry it out, but we also don't want to be storing raw pork. You'll see a lot of liquid start to come out. The good news is every step that we have going forward is going to be drawing liquid out of the ingredients that we put in and that will start building up layers to our sauce. And once you're satisfied that everything's cooked through, you can take it out and add it to your eggs. Now check out what three pounds of mushrooms looks like. So we want to have a nice mix of mushrooms as we go through. Right now we have shiitake and some cremini. You can add any mushrooms that you like at the store. You could add oyster. If you find other kinds, you can add other kinds. We have some enoki that we're going to be adding later on. Uh, it just cooks faster, so we don't need to put it in right at the beginning. Now mushrooms are super important at getting both fiber and protein into your dish. With the mushrooms cooked down, we can move on to the next phase. Let's add our ginger and garlic. 
And then we'll sneak in our onion. So we still want our onion to have some texture as we go through. So we wanna make sure that we don't completely soften them. We're gonna cook them just enough so that they're not raw. Maybe they get some color on the outside, but we still want them to be a little bit firm when we take them out. Now, once the onions start to sweat, I wanna peel them away from the edges a little bit. This is where it's easier to have a wok, but I don't have a wok large enough to do the things that I need it to do. And we're gonna pour a ring of tamari around the outside. And we want that to sort of cook off around the edges. And then as you scrape up the bits at the bottom, you won't quite get an authentic wok hay, but it's close. Stainless steel hay. With the onion so, so soft, I'm gonna quickly add my scallion. Now the scallion just needs a quick couple seconds in the heat, it doesn't need a whole lot. And then we're on to the next step. So, you can see we have some buildup at the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna deglaze with some cold water. And then in go our peppers. So, just like the onions, you wanna cook these just a little bit past raw so that they still have some texture to them without being complete mush. It's a little hard to tell when you have this much tamari. It looks a lot more cooked than it is. But, if you give them a little squish and you feel that give, you're probably good to move to the next step. Last step, shredded cabbage. Now we really just want enough heat on this for it to wilt, which is a lot easier to do as it cooks down. And then as soon as you have more cooked cabbage than raw, move on to the next step. And now it just comes down to the mix. And now you split it up for the week. Bon appetit. And there you have it, folks. Healthy homemade lunches for the week. If you try it on your own, let me know how it turns out. Otherwise, let me know what you want to see next. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.